Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about backup sump pumps, and we'd like to thank Wendy Bennett for liking and sharing the podcast. We'd also like to thank CastBox for featuring us again in their education category, and they are now one of the fastest-growing, highest-rated podcast apps for iOS and Android, Mm -hmm. and they have a new search feature. So if you enter in a keyword or phrase, it searches every title and all the transcripts of every single podcast to give you results. Do we have transcripts? No, I just have like notes. And I do like a sentence. Because <laughs> yeah, it's too much work to type. <laughs> so this week it'll be like sump pumps. This week we talk about sump pumps. Well, it better be That's... backup sump pumps. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Insurance research says around 90% of basements are going to get some water during their life. Hmm. And if you have three inches of water, it can be up to $11,000 in repairs for the average home. The Federal Emergency Management Agency suggests installing gutters and downspouts. Keep your gutters free of debris. You can use gutter guards, so there's items like gutter brush or gutter stuff. And then have a routine. Every spring and every fall, check your gutters and run your downspouts at least 10 feet away from the house, hmm. which is pretty amazing. You want Does to use- they do that? Yeah, well, they're saying, a couple of these insurance blogs I was reading, they're suggesting keep your downspouts, the extensions, 20 feet away from the house. Hmm. The more research they're doing, they say that just something that simple puts less water pressure against the walls of the basement. Right. And then they're saying slope the soil from the foundation one inch per foot for at least 10 feet minimum. Use window well covers and have a backup sump pump. Nice. If you have a sump pump in your home, a backup sump pump added inside the pit is going to give you more protection if there's a power outage or your primary pump fails. If you have a finished basement or if you're storing anything of value in your basement, that backup is going to help prevent flooding or damage, especially if you're on vacation and there's a storm. So there's two sump pumps in your pit? Right, so you're gonna have your primary, and now we're gonna add a second, generally going to be smaller, but the more gallons per minute it pushes, so very similar to the primary, the safer your basement's going to be. Hmm. There are three main types of backup sump pumps. You have DC, AC-DC, and water-powered. And the DC units are the most common. The backup sump pump is connected to a 12-volt battery that's plugged into a charger. And when the power goes off, the backup pump's going to use battery power to drain the sump pit when it fills with water. In an AC-DC system, The backup is going to run off AC power from the outlet if the primary pump fails, and so it's not using the battery at all. But then if the power goes out, then Mm -hmm. it switches over and it uses power from the battery. If you have a battery-only backup sump pump, but the power's still on and your primary pump fails, is it going to work? Yes. So it'll just use the battery. If the water gets high enough, the float's going to... Well, yeah, because it's a battery only. Right. (laughs) So the float's going to trigger it and it's going to empty the pit. The, pri- the reason why I like the ACDCs, they're potentially better protection. If the electric's on and the primary fails, it's not drawing the battery. If you have a DC only and there's a storm, but the electric's still on, potentially it could be draining the battery faster than it can charge. Okay. So, you know, it could potentially be a problem. And especially if you don't know about it. That's why it's nice to have a system that gives you some type of alert okay. that, the, that it's been triggered, the, back, mm-hmm. the backup has been triggered. And a backup sump pump, it can also help keep up with a high volume of water coming into your pit. So if the water gets high enough, both pumps are going to work together to oh. discharge water. Nice. Yeah. There are water-powered backup sump pumps. and What does u- that mean? They're using water pressure from the main water supply to siphon water out of the sump pit. So if you have city water, you could use a water-powered pump. If you have well water, you wouldn't want to use it because if the electricity goes off and your well's not working, it's not going to work. Uh -uh. And because you're using fresh water to power the suction action, this type of pump isn't allowed in some communities because you're using about one gallon of water for every two gallons of water you're removing. So for every one gallon of fresh water that's going through this pump, it's it's actually creating a, a suction force 
that's sucking out water with it. Mm -hmm. So you're wasting one gallon of fresh water for every two gallons that you're removing from your pit. Well, this so, doesn't seem smart. Well, you know, if you have a house where you have a sump pump and it never goes on, so this would only be for the rare emergency, then it's probably okay because you don't have to have it plugged into an outlet, so you're not worried about the electricity yeah, going off. Or a you, battery dying. Or, or battery, exactly. So you have no maintenance on this at all, mm -hmm. but as long as you have water pressure, it's going to protect your basement. Okay. If you're shopping for a water-powered sump pump, you want to compare the minimum pressure needed for it to work, usually around 40 pounds of pressure. And the pressure gallons. From what? So how much pressure your main water is? What's how the water pressure that? coming into your house? So you can either buy a gauge and connect it to your system or call your village and they'll give you an idea. Connect it where? You would connect it to your main pipes in the house. And some of them you can actually connect to the spigot, your garden hose spigot, hmm. and then turn it on full. It'll give you an idea of the water pressure. So you need to know the water pressure and how many gallons per hour this is pumping. A couple that I looked at were between 500 and 900 gallons per hour at a 10-foot head height. So this is the vertical height of the discharge pipe before it turns horizontally and goes out of the house. Hmm. And there's two styles of the water-powered sump pumps. One is installed above the pit, so it's not in the pit at all. The other style is inside the pit. And you want to check your community because some communities won't allow it if it's inside the pit or they're going to require a special backflow prevention valve because of the risk of contaminating your drinking water. So you're wasting fresh water and you can contaminate your drinking water? Right. That's mm -hmm. why above the sump is better because it's it uses a less expensive vacuum breaker valve and you have less chance of contaminating your drinking water. Mm. For backup sump pumps that use a battery, the two most common batteries are a wet cell, or they're called flooded, or AGM, which is short for absorbed glass mat. And the AGM batteries are sealed and maintenance-free with the wet cell deep cycle batteries, they can either be maintenance free or require maintenance. And many of these wet cell backup batteries you purchase at a local hardware store, they're going to be shipped to the store dry. So that means when you get it, you also have to buy acid, and you're going to have to fill this with acid before you charge it and put it into your system. So where do you get that? You're going to have to get it at the hardware store too. So if you go to a hardware store, make sure you check to see whether it's dry. And if it is dry, you need to buy acid. Are some of them wet? Yes, yeah, so some of them are already filled, hmm. and, and so they're flooded already. <laughs> <laughs> How would you add acid to a battery? So you want to make sure you're wearing rubber gloves and eye goggles. Acid's you know, very caustic and toxic. Wear work clothes, cover all exposed skin, work in a well-ventilated area. The box that it comes in is going to generally have a tube that comes right out of the top, and that way you can squeeze that tube and control the acid that's flowing out of it. You're going to remove so the... So what? Is it like a juice box? It's like a giant acid-filled juice box. <laughs> <laughs> so remove the caps or the foil seal from the top of the battery and fill each cell to the line marked or check your manual how high they want that acid. You're going to replace the caps and let it set to see whether it settles. After 20 minutes, you're going to remove all the caps and see if you need to add any more acid. Hmm. For batteries like this that you fill, they're going to require maintenance, and because hydrogen and oxygen is released during the charge cycle, it has to be in an area that's well ventilated and there's no chance of a spark igniting the gases. You're going to have to add distilled water occasionally, and it's usually about once every six months, but when you first set this up, you should check the battery once every month or two just to see how much water is lost every month. The sealed wet cell batteries are nice because they don't require maintenance. And the AGM batteries are sealed and can have up to a 50% longer runtime compared to the inexpensive wet cell batteries, but the AGM batteries are going to be more expensive. Hmm. The AGM batteries are going to charge quicker, and when fully charged, they're only discharging about 1% a month when they're not used, hmm. compared to 1% a day with a wet cell battery. <laughs> so the inexpensive wet cell batteries have a two to three year lifespan. The more expensive wet cell batteries with better component parts they're going to have a lifespan of four to seven years, and the AGM batteries have a four to five year lifespan, but these can last longer depending on how often they're used and then the environment they're kept in. Mm. Heat can really damage batteries. And then if you're replacing a battery for a system that you already have, check to see whether it can use the new AGM batteries or whether you have to use a wet cell. And if you don't have your manual, I would call the manufacturer and see what type of battery they recommend for your system. Mm -hmm. 
When you're comparing batteries, look at the amp hours. So it's a capital A, small h. And the amount of amp hours is the energy available for it to run for a certain amount of time, but it varies depending on the draw and the type of motor you're using. Basically, the bigger the number, the more battery life that's available. Mm -hmm. Some are just going to give you an estimated hours of run time. For most backup batteries for sump pumps, you're going to get about six to eight hours continuous, or you're going to get a few days intermittently. Some batteries I looked at, the Wayne backup battery is a 75 amp hour battery. The Basement Watchdog AGM is 75 amp hours, and it says if you're using their big combo unit, it's going to give you 48 hours of runtime. If you're using their standard combo unit, 80 hours of runtime. Hmm. The Pump Spy 40 amp hour is an AGM style battery, and then there's a Pump Spy that's 75 amp hours. The Zoller is a 75 amp hour AGM, and Interstate Batteries has a 100 amp hour AGM battery. Hmm. So it really pays to look at them and compare that. So in the store, these are going to be by the sub pumps, right? Generally, that's where most people are going to merchandise them, yeah. Okay. When you're comparing backup sump pumps, compare the output or gallons per hour. Most of your primary sump pumps are going to be in the 2,000 to 4,000 gallons per hour range. The higher the gallons per hour, the better the pump's going to handle a lot of water in a storm. Most of the backup sump pumps are going to be 1,000 to 3,000 gallons per hour, but there are some pumps that go higher. Pros are recommending comparing the gallons per hour at a 10-foot head height, or you're going to see on the box GPH at 10 feet. Some companies are going to list their gallons per hour at 0 feet, some at 15 or 20, so you want to make sure you're comparing... How could it be 0? Yeah, that's what it yeah, is. It's silly. Because, you know, your head height is the vertical height that your discharge pipe is going up before it goes off horizontally and out of the house. So how much lift it has to overcome, that weight. Mm -hmm. So if you're listing it at zero, there's no pressure. So when you're looking at the gallons per hour, you want to make sure that you're comparing it at the same head height. Mm -hmm. Before you go shopping for a backup system, I would take a look at the current pit and the pump and see the width of the pit. If you have a small pit around 12 inches wide, you may want to buy a combo unit. So you've got the primary and a backup pre-assembled all together on the same discharge pipe, and this is going to fit into any size pit. Mm. If you have a standard pit 18 to 24 inches wide, then you can put the backup next to your primary. Mm. You should also compare the types of alarms. Some will let you know when the electricity's off or if the battery's been used. Some systems are going to send a pre-programmed message on a landline, or there's Wi-Fi systems where you can get an email or a text alert. Mm. Once you set up your backup sump pump, you should have a routine to check the backup and also your primary about once every six months or before vacation. Or and, if it's going to rain a lot. Right. <laughs> right. So check the pit for debris and you can clean it out with a wet vac. You should also fill up the pit with water and see if your primary is working properly. Check your discharge pipe. And then you can either lift the float switch on your backup to see if it turns on or better, unplug your primary and fill it up with water and make sure the backup is running properly. Fill the pit with water? Pill, what did I say? Just fill it with water? Fill the pit with water. If your discharge pipe has a weep hole, make sure it isn't blocked. And then check the fluid level in your battery. If it requires maintenance, you want to fill that with distilled water only. And if there are sensors, make sure they're clean and they're working. Check for buildup on the battery terminals and then make sure that you have a backup fuse for your battery charger. That's a lot. <laughs> Do you have any tips for installing a backup? So there's a couple main styles. If you're getting a combo unit that has a new primary sump pump and a backup pre-assembled together, generally they're going to have a Y fitting connected to one main pipe, and that's going to be connected to your discharge pipe going up and out of the house. So check in the box whether you need a new check valve. Sometimes the pre-assembled systems, they'll have a check valve with each pump, huh. so it's all together. And then all you have to do then is use a rubber coupling to connect it to the main discharge pipe going out of the house. Check on that. If it doesn't come with one, you can also use a check valve to connect it to the main body. And when you remove the old pump, if you had to cut down the pipe and you need to add a length of discharge pipe, mm -hmm. you can also use a rubber coupling there with stainless steel hose clamps. And so you can create like a short length of pipe and extend it with that rubber coupling right. and then connect it to your new combo unit. All of the new sump pumps are going to be inch and a half discharge pipe. If you have an old home, you could have inch and a quarter pipe. 
because hmm. it used to be inch and a quarter or inch and a half. So check the manual or check their pipe, and you can get adapters now to go from inch and a half to inch and a quarter if you have an old system. Fancy. Once you have your unit in the pit, you're going to need to connect all the wires to the battery. You're going to have a battery box that the battery sets into. On the lid, there's going to be a control unit, and this is going to either monitor the battery. If you have sensors, it's going to charge the battery, so this needs to be plugged in. Your primary sump pump has to be plugged into electric. For many systems, you're going to need more than two places to plug into, so if you have a standard outlet above your pit, you're going to need an outlet adapter. So this is going to plug into your outlet, and rather ha than having two places to plug into, now you'll have six, for example. Right. If you get something with surge protection, it's going to also be safer for the electronics on the charger. Right, and those adapters are nice if the plug is wide. Right. Because a lot of times it'll block the other outlet. Exactly. You should also use cable ties to hold the wires up out of the pit and away from the floats. And check your manual. Sometimes they want you to have the float facing away from the main pipe that goes into the pit. Hmm. When you're adding a backup sump pump to an existing primary pump, you want to plan if you're going to be running an independent discharge pipe up and out of the pit and then out of the house, or you're just going to be connecting to the primary pump's discharge pipe. And how would you so, decide that? Well, if you have its own discharge pipe, you're going, to, you're going to be able to move a little more volume of water out of the pit if there's, you know, if, if you're in a high water table or if you get a lot of storms. But if you meaning if they're both running at the same time, right? Yeah, you're going to move more more water, Obviously. but it's going to cost more. And depending on how far it is, you know, if you're not if the pump doesn't oh, go, because that, it's more pipe. Yeah, <laughs> you know, how far is it? How high do you have to go, and how far do you have to discharge? Mm -hmm. How easy is it to cut a hole in either your basement or your crawl space out of the house? Right. Do it you need might, a special cover for that too? Uh, most covers are going to have a place where you can punch out different holes, or you're going to end up having to cut a hole. Okay. the cover for it but you know for a lot of projects if it's just a standard setup it's much easier you know the pipes already out of the house right. that's, that's already done mm -hmm. so it's just easier to cut into it you're gonna have less pipe so you're gonna have to make a list of all the materials you need if you're cutting into the primary discharge pipe you're gonna need a length of inch and a half PVC pipe for most applications and those are sold in 10 foot links you're gonna need a Y fitting inch and a half and a 45 degree elbow and then see whether you need a check valve or not, or if it comes with it. Mm -hmm. Then you want to measure and cut all your pieces and dry fit all the pieces together so that you're making sure that the pipes are coming up and out of the pit parallel to each other. You want enough room between the pumps so they're not touching, and you want to make sure the floats have plenty of room to move and work mm -hmm. before you glue it all together. Yeah. When you're connecting PVC pipe to fittings, I took some training from Odie, and they make a lot of the cements and the primers for PVC. They recommended using the primer on the fitting first inside the outside of the pipe and then put a second coat of the primer on the inside of the fitting. And then while the primer's still wet, put a coat of cement on the outside of the pipe, then the inside of the fitting, and then a second coat of cement on the outside of the pipe. Put your two parts together, give it a quarter turn, and hold it for 15 or 20 seconds, and you're going to get the best connection. So primer inside, outside, inside. Cement is outside, inside, outside? Exactly. Huh. Easy enough. <laughs> if you're connecting a primary sump pump and a backup sump pump together with a Y that's going to the same discharge pipe, okay. you want to make sure that you're using two check valves and they both need to be underneath the Y. You don't want to use one check valve past the Y because if there's ever a problem with a check valve, then the water would stop there and come back down into the pit. Yeah. Some pumps are going to require a weep hole, an eighth inch hole inside the pit about the height of the top of the pump to prevent an air bubble in the impeller. So make sure that you check your manual. Some pumps require it, some pumps don't. Okay. And then one other tip, if you have a small pit, if you don't want to buy a combo unit, there are small backup sump pumps that have a bracket, and you can attach this right to the discharge pipe above the primary sump pump, hmm. and it just attaches with a couple stainless steel hose clamps, and you just need to make sure that there's room for the floats to work. Okay. What are some top-rated companies? So Mind the, you, you haven't spelled anything yet. So the, the basement watchdog, you're going to find that in most hardware stores and home centers, Wayne... Flotec, it's F-L-O-T-E-C, Zoller, Z-O-E-L-L-E-R, everybody's from Chicago, says Zoller, mm -hmm. Ion, I-O-N, and Liberty. Do you have anything else to add? 
Before you shop, I would check to see how much room I have in the pit. The DC units are going to be less expensive. The AC-DC units can potentially be more protection. And with the primary pump, they usually last 6 to 10 years. I like marking the discharge pipe or the wall, the date when I originally put it in. And that way you're changing it before it fails. Mm -hmm. And that also might give you an insight. You might consider getting one of the combo units that have the primary and the backup if it's close to the end of its life. You want to match the battery type to your backup pump. Some are going to recommend wet, some AGM. The wet cell batteries that need maintenance, you're going to have to check the fluid level about every six months, and then you're filling it with distilled water. Mm -hmm. The inexpensive wet cells are going to last two to three years. The higher grade wet cells, four to seven. AGM batteries last four to five years. And most of these systems are going to let you know if there's a problem with the battery when it needs to be replaced. Mm. Your discharge pipe, you want to keep it about 10 feet or more from the house, and then check and test both pumps before a vacation. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, iHeartRadio, and CastBox. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 deep,